thank you for coming to my talk in the IMS seminar. And um, I know now it's a really challenging period for all of us, um, uh, but I have tried to uh, prepare the talk for the uh, remote presentation. It's actually my first time to give a talk in this kind of style. Um, um, please allow me if I could not um, manage or organize the talk uh, very well, but uh, I'll do my best. So the title of my presentation today is a construction of Abe constants from Randall Ginsburg models. So the, uh, it is a kind of uh, the result which connects the, the arithmetic Ape constant, which is a uh, classical uh, historical uh, subject to a kind of uh, geometry, uh, especially the Hodge theory and uh, more about the mirror symmetry things. Okay. Right. So I would like to start uh, the talk. As an introduction, firstly, uh, I would like to uh, recall the famous fact that uh, the Riemann Z function and its special, special value Z3 is irrational. Uh, it was first proven in 20s uh, by Aperi, and uh, uh, just after one year, the proof was brushed up by uh, other mathematician workers. Okay. And they proved that the irrationality of Z3 uh, as a following idea, essentially. Okay. Firstly, we need to consider a kind of very mysterious recurrence. Uh, please consider the recurrence, which is defined by n cubed kn minus 34 n cubed minus 51 n squared plus 27 n minus 5 for the kn plus 1 part, and n minus 1 cubed kn minus 2 equals 0. It defines a, a kind of sequence as the solutions. Okay. If we put the solution starting with the initial information a0 equal 1, a1 equal 5, uh, we obtain one solution an. On the other hand, if we choose another solution which is given by v0 equal 0 and v1 equal 6, then we obtain another sequence bn. Okay. Then this, uh, these pairs of the solution has a very good um, property that if we compare the difference between z3 and bn over an, uh, it is uh, smaller than uh, an, uh, the order of the ends uh, to n to minus two with a random symbol. In other words, bn over an gives a, a very good sequence which converges to zeta three very rapidly. Also, we can express this solution an and bn inside of the uh, integer or rationals. A n itself is an integer for all n, and if we take uh, 2L cube, here L is a um, least common multiplicity 1, 1, 2, 2 n, uh, to B n, then it is an integer. In other words, B n is a rational. Okay. And also, uh, we can determine the size of the A n by taking A n is, a, uh, again, with a random symbol, uh, the, the, the order of the an is alpha n for a certain characteristic solution for alpha in the constant number, in the complex number. So with this fact, uh, we can see that uh, we can compare the difference of the uh, special value zeta three and the rational numbers bn over an, and uh, its order is uh, an to minus one to plus sigma for uh, for, sorry, minus one plus delta for certain small delta, which is which gives a very famous uh, irrationality criterion. So this is the idea of the uh, uh, proof for the irrationality of the zeta three. And here, I want to refer the key of the proof. Okay. So the point is uh, we have found uh, existence of two solutions a n and b n. Here, a n is coming from integer and b n is irrational. And uh, they are a solution of a recurrence such that b n over a n converges to z3 uh, rapidly. Okay. So the, uh, the natural uh, question is, what is actually the meaning of a n and b n, or perhaps the recurrence itself? Actually, um, Nowadays, uh, we can understand their meanings by using the geometry. As a preparation, 
firstly, instead of the AN and BN themselves, I want to prepare the uh, polynomials AT, which is given by AMTN, and BT, which is a BMTN. But uh, because of uh, the technical uh, result, I, I need to divide them by six, one over six. And please uh, remember this uh, value six, uh, it appears again in the uh, general situation. And uh, for the, del for the uh, differential, instead of the usual differential, I want to consider the log version of the differential. So delta uh, means that t times uh, part delta by delta t. Okay. Then the recurrence turns to be a kind of differential operator. L, which is defined by delta, uh, delta two cubed minus t uh, times two delta plus one times 17 delta square plus 17 delta plus five plus t square delta cube plus one cube. Okay. Then the recurrence uh, implies that if we apply this differential operator to the, this at, which is a, a polynomial, or we can say that it is a function, um, then LAD equals zero. Okay. Or bt also satisfies the properties that del minus one times L bt equals zero. Okay. So both of them are coming from the fact that uh, an and bn are solution of the recurrence. So when we obtain a differential operator, of course, uh, since it's a kind of adjective of the seminar, uh, we should consider the picard hooks equation. Actually, the theorem proved by Baker and Peters in 1984 shows the following fact. The above L, I want to show again, this differential operator, the above L is a kind of picard hooks operator for a certain family X of K3 surfaces. Okay. We need to treat a uh, singularity a little bit, but essentially uh, the equation is uh, for uh, as follows. I mean, this uh, family of K3 surfaces is birationally equivalent to uh, this one, X D prime, which is uh, each fiber is given by one minus, one minus X, Y, Z, minus T, X, Y, Z, one minus X, one minus one, minus one minus C equals zero. Oh. Of course, it should be uh, surface in P3. Right. So this gives a geometric interpretation. And uh, when we also consider the recurrence or uh, the differential picard uh, operator and uh, A satisfies uh, A equals zero, A equals zero, we can see that uh, the AN expresses a kind of holomorphic period. Okay. So uh, I want to say that the origin of the recurrence will be geometric. Okay. And also AT is a period function. Okay. On the other hand, BT do not satisfy the condition LBT equals zero, but uh, instead we uh, BT satisfy another kind of equation given by del minus one LBT equals zero. So we may say that BT satisfies a kind of inhomogeneous part version of the picard hooks equation. Okay. So everything could be realized by considering the picard hooks equation or geometrically arising from a family of K3 surfaces. So we want to generalize this situation to find out uh, such a kind of relation between the isometric uh, special values of the L function and somewhat kind of family of the K3 surface, or perhaps uh, uh, in a higher dimensional case, we should consider more general Calabria n-fold. Okay. So to explain such a kind of family of uh, Calabria n-fold, uh, we should consider the Randall Ginsburg model for uh, which, which should be the mirror of the Fano 3 okay. So the section Randall Ginsburg models for Fano 3 okay. uh, Very briefly, I would like to uh, explain the idea uh, when we consider the uh, usual, just a mirror symmetry, it's give, it is a conjecture which compares the mirror pair of Calabria n-fold x and its mirror x, uh, not, uh, this is also a, again a Calabria n-fold. Okay. However, the typical way to get a Calabria um, manifold is considering the final variety and its hypersurface. When we obtain an anti-canonical hypersurface section of a given final variety, then it is a Calabria manifold. Okay. 
So we can compare not only the uh, Calvia manifold, but it's kind of total space uh, fan variety. And uh, there is no hope to get the project variety as a mirror of the funnel. Instead, we should consider the family of the Calabias. Okay. So the picture is like this. If we have the funnel variety, sorry, this is a funnel. Funnel variety V, then uh, we uh, obtain a certain uh, conjecture mirror subject, which is uh, uh, the uh, five word. Um, Cash project variety Y over the A1 with, uh, with a super potential W. Okay. It is uh, with some condition, it is called the random diesel model. And if we consider the uh, hypersurface uh, section X inside of this original funnel, then it should be mirror to the general fiber of this, I mean, of the random diesel model X. So mm, it might be, uh, it will be very difficult to treat all kinds of a fun variety, but fortunately, uh, as a, a specific uh, example, uh, we obtain a classification of funnel threefold, which has a property that the Picard number equal one. Okay? It was done by Mukai threefolds. Uh, it is uh, uh, it, uh, they are out of type of the, such a kind of funnel threefolds. Okay. But here, uh, I want to pick up uh, five types of the Mukai three poles uh, uh, for the upper constants topics. Okay. So each of them are given by essentially Grassmannian or uh, Schubert calculus more generally. For example, the uh, three fold V10 is given inside of the Grassmannian of the two five uh, with the intersection of, the, uh, of a certain quadratic and the codimension two planes and so on. Rather than this um, original definition of the V10, 12, 14, 16, 18, uh, later I would like to explain their origin coming from the toric variety. So the good point is that when we consider these Mukai's panel three for V10 to V18, actually one of them, uh, uh, one of them is just a very current Peters family. Actually, it is a LZ model uh, of the final three for V12. Okay. So it is natural to consider the generalized their result for uh, as a uh, Mukai three fold. So do you have any question about these points? I hope that uh, everyone can <laughs> now hear my talk. Sorry, when you say intersection, what are you intersecting inside of? Like for V12 and V14, that's you're mm -hmm. intersecting this Grassmannian with a plane inside of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Inside of the Grassmannian, uh, we we cut out them by some planes. Then we obtain the uh, the realization of these final three poles. Sorry, what do you? I mean, that where does the plane live? Where does the inner? What are you embedding the Grassmannian with Plucker coordinates? You mean or? Yes, yes, I think so. Oh, okay, thanks. Yes. Right. So can I ask you, excuse mm -hmm. me, uh, mm -hmm. can I ask you why you choose this fast pick five family? Oh, uh, uh, I would like to explain because for these five families, uh, Gorishev gives the uh, result in A model side. Uh, actually, we obtain a kind of upper constant for each of them. Oh, I see. And uh, the aim of uh, my uh, this talk is explaining uh, the Gorishev's result by using the B model side. I see. So I see. since we have already known the A model side result for these only five um, guys threefold, I would like to explain them in the B model side. I see. Thank you. Yes. So actually, so uh, as uh, the question. Um, we obtain the upper constant in A model side. And uh, honestly here, we need to use a technique coming from the quantum cohomology, quantum demodules and quantum recursion and it's very uh, deeper topics. So uh, I would not be able to uh, talk so precisely, but I just uh, will give the idea and uh, show the, uh, introduce the results. Okay. So uh, Gorishev uh, generalized this construction of uh, such a mysterious sequences a n b n and the special value of a functions as their limit b n over a n okay 
by using the quantum recurrences technique. So the idea is that uh, firstly, we, we can uh, define the quantum cohomology by using the gram of Witten theory uh, with genus equals zero. Uh, and uh, we obtain the quantum product. Uh, it is totally different from the usual product on the uh, cohomologies. But anyway, uh, put a new product on the cohomology of the final threefold edge. Then uh, with a new uh, localized parameter C T T bus, we obtain uh, the bundle H uh, by uh, by tensoring uh, the cohomologies, and uh, we also can put the differential by taking uh, delta H uh, tensor one equal the uh, conical section minus K dot H for each cohomology class, okay. and then it defines a D module structure on this total of the edge. Okay. And there is a uh, conjecture and fact in this case uh, that edge can be expressed as a, a D over DL hat with a certain um, polynomial L hat. We, and uh, we express this L hat uh, as a, sorry, uh, we express each coefficient of the L hat by beta ij for the T i del j this operator. Then by using this beta ij, we obtain a new uh, poly polynomial with respect to uh, u hat, which has a form that sigma of the beta ij times k minus i dot j times u hat k minus i equals zero. Okay? So this expresses a recurrence in u hat k minus one. Unfortunately, if we consider this uh, original u hat, then uh, it is called a kind of irregular uh, the module things and um, we need a kind uh, a regularization operator and operation and it is given by the full error class transform. Then finally, we obtain the co a certain quantum recurrence with respect to a uh, new variable UK, which is defined by K factorial UK hat. And by putting the initial data uh, A0 equal one or B0 equal zero, B1 equal one, then we obtain the desired AK and BK. So by using this quantum recurrence, uh, Goyshev actually checks that for each of the uh, the above uh, five kinds of Mukai threefold, V10, V12, V14, V16, V18, we obtain a certain kind of special value of the L functions. I want to say they are the upper constant corresponding to the given final threefold. Okay. So for example, for the V12, we obtain one over six zeta three. So here we obtain the zeta three, original zeta three in the upper proof. And please recall that uh, we, firstly, sorry, I want to go back to the first page. Firstly, we have taken the original Bn by the initial data V0 equals zero, but V1 equals six here. On the other hand, for Gorshev's technique, um, quantum the initial data for the quantum recurrence is a uh, one. So we obtain the one over six uh, smaller uh, sequence for the VN, and it affects to this coefficient one over six zeta three. So like this, uh, for not only V12 case, uh, for the V10, V14, V16, V18 case, we obtain the special value, uh, which is a rational product of the zeta three or zeta two, or uh, the, uh, another L function with a um, decrease um, L function for the chi-3. Okay. So the uh, natural question and actually the aim of uh, today's talk is what is the construction in B model side? Because the quantum cohomology and concerning the A model variation of structure is of course the uh, discussion in the A model side. And uh, if we can find out their uh, translation in the B model side, then those uh, those uh, run against the model and final uh, three for the total mysterious connection by the mirror, we obtain exactly same uh, arithmetic invariance coming from them by using the geometry. Uh, excuse so, me. Uh, yes. Uh, could you could you explain why this beta ij in the previous slide? Ah, beta uh, beta ij is just a uh, this is a definition of the beta ij. Uh, there is a result that uh, for the given D module H, uh, we can uh, obtain the isomorphism uh, 
to the D over D L hat for a certain L hat. And by using this L hat, we define the quotient beta ij for, by picking up the quotient for the ti del j term. Oh, I see. Thank you. And, 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 and I'm sorry, I, I, honestly, I couldn't uh, explain in detail about the uh, Q quantum uh, recurrences. Maybe it, it would be my future work to understand more precisely. Okay. I see. So now I would like to introduce main result. Actually, uh, again, the question is construct uh, this B and A and or as an upper constant by using uh, in, inside of the B model side. Okay. So the result for V12, V16, V18 is given by Silva Jr. And for V10 and V14, especially V10 uh, is by uh, Matka, and V14 is given by the speaker. Okay. So for any of such a Mukai's, uh, sorry, maybe I should say the above. Not all of the Mukai's report, but the above five types of the uh, uh, final three for V, the upper constant is obtained actually as the limits of higher normal functions. More precisely, this is a limit of the higher normal function pairing with a holomorphic two form omega t. Okay. So this is a higher normal function and we can take the test value uh, by putting the holomorphic two form and we can consider the, uh, its limits uh, or to a certain singular fiber. Then we obtain the upper constant. So here, uh, the place we consider higher normal function is actually the mirror Randall Ginza model of, uh, sorry, it's a misnotation, not A, but uh, the Mukai 3 for B. All right. So, uh, of course, uh, I would like to introduce what is the meaning of the limits and what is the notion of the higher normal function uh, by using uh, the Riemann loop path. So, sorry, before you introduce higher normal functions, can I ask you just as a sort of general philosophical question, what's the, uh, I mean, Atefe's result was something about proving irrationality of zeta three. And now you're exactly. saying that all of the, you're proving that all of these kind of three folds, you get this Atefe constant. What's mm -hmm. the kind of, how, how should I think about that? What, yeah, like, uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, the, the key point is finding uh, the, uh, sequence BN and AN, but more uh, more uh, essentially, we need to find a good recurrence, right? And this recurrence is uh, essentially the picard fuchs equation. In other words, we obtain a uh, picard fuchs equation for a uh, good good Calabria, family of Calabrian n-folds, such that on, on this Calabrian n-fold, by construct, constructing a good higher normal functions, we obtain the uh, every function value as a kind of limit. Okay, so somehow, it, so the answer to my question maybe is something like Aperi's proof told us something about the irrationality of zeta mm -hmm. three, which was mm -hmm. an L function for some particular family of cubics, whatever. And now mm -hmm. you're telling me that mm -hmm. it, there's some other L function, but some other zeta values or something mm -hmm. that also occurs mm -hmm. periods. And you're exactly. telling me how to get information about those. Exactly, exactly, yes. Okay. Cool. And uh, as I will explain uh, from now, higher normal function is uh, actually coming from geometrically uh, kind of higher version of the algebraic cycles. So uh, it is a kind of technique to obtain the special zeta values, spe special value of L functions from the algebraic cycles on the family of Calabria. And another uh, good aspect is that uh, this, um, arithmetic invariant is preserved under the uh, mirror correspondence. Okay. So both of the B model and the A model side, we obtain the, uh, we, we know that uh, we will uh, have the method to obtain the special value. All right, so uh, I would like to explain what is a higher normal function, okay, the section. So for the simplest day, I want to uh, assume uh, X is a smooth classic project variety over C. 
and uh, we, I, I, as, as I uh, explained, uh, uh, I want to consider essential as a group cycles. So uh, we should consider the, the child groups CHPX. It is given by the ZPX, which is a formal sum of the sub varieties, and we take the uh, rational equivalent. It is a kind of generalization of the linear equivalence for the divisors. And uh, in this class, I want to uh, ignore the torsion part. So uh, when I just write CHPX, it means that CHPX takes a key. And for each of the algebraic cycles, as you know, we can consider the cycle class, uh, uh, which is uh, invariant and in the uh, homology, and it is used to state the Hodge conjecture. And uh, when the cycle class vanishes, then to detect the non trivialty of the uh, given uh, element of the child groups, uh, we, we often use the abel yakov map. Actually, for these cycles, we can define the abel yakov map AJX as, a for, as following. Okay? It is a map uh, from the cycles uh, such as cycle class vanishes, CHP home X, to, us, uh, to the intermediate Jacobian JPX. Okay. And the intermediate Jap Jacobian JPX uh, can be expressed by uh, the uh, certain Hodge filtration of the uh, dual of the cohomology HX uh, divided by the integer part of the, cohom the homology. And uh, it is well known that uh, locally, analytically, it is given by for the given cycle Z, Z result of the abel yakov map is a, a kind of function uh, which maps differential form to certain value. Okay? And for the given differential form uh, W, uh, sorry, omega, uh, yeah, omega, uh, we just consider the membrane integral of this omega uh, uh, along the uh, dimension uh, 2n minus 2p plus one cycle gamma. This gamma satisfies the properties that if we take the boundary of this topological cycle, then it is actually the original uh, algebraic cycle for Z. Okay. Mm. And uh, also, uh, it is useful to consider this intermediate Jacobian JPX by using the category of the mixer structure. Uh, if we consider the extension class uh, to one of the category in the categories of mixed or structure, then JPX is just given by uh, the extension class uh, of H2P minus one XP by Q. So if we fix a variety X, then by considering the abel yakov map, we obtain the abel yakov value for uh, one fixed algebraic cycles. And uh, we can uh, generalize this notion to the family of the cycles on the family of the varieties. So for a smooth family X, which is give, uh, each fiber is XP, and uh, if we consider a family of cycle Z over this smooth family, it is given by ZT, uh, and each of them are element of the CHP form XT or X, then by taking the fiber-wise abelian values, AJ, XP, ZT, we obtain a holomorphic function in uh, over the, the parameter space S of the uh, Jacobian bundle here, instead of the fixed Jacobian, we should consider the Jacobian bundle, so JPX. Okay. And this is called the usual normal function. So roughly speaking, we just consider the uh, family of the abelian Jacobi values of the family. Uh, sorry, uh, we, we are considering the abelian Jacobi values uh, function for a family of cycles. And here, we can generate everything by considering the higher version, higher generalization. So the, the most essential thing is that instead of the Azure cycles, we should consider higher child cycle. So here, not only one uh, parameter P, we also another degree N, CHPXN is given by uh, the homology of the Brooks uh, double complex DBX dot del B. Okay. I, uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, complicated to explain the very precise definition of the higher child cycles, but uh, here uh, what we should consider is that each of these elements of the ZPX dot is, can be represented by codimension P cycle on not only X, but X times P1 minus one dot. Okay. So P1 minus one dot is a space to define the information of the boundaries. 
because P1 give, uh, has a, a kind of a marked point zero and infinity. So uh, to consider the cycles, we should consider the, its boundary. And this boundary information can be uh, artificially put by using the pullback of the information, uh, pullback of the point of the zero and infinity. Okay. So by using these boundary conditions, uh, we preserve the information of the, for example, the singularity of the algebraic cycles, and uh, we can generalize the notion of the cycles to higher child cycles. Right. On the other hand, please recall that uh, intermediate Jacobian JPX has uh, uh, expression by using the extension class of the certain cohomology class. So for the double degree case, by using this double degree, we also can generalize the higher generalization of the intermediate Jacobian. I just wanted to note it uh, as JP and X. It is given by extension class, again, on the category of the mixed order structure uh, of, uh, of the H to P minus N minus one, XP uh, by Q. Okay. So here we use uh, both information of the P and N to define it. And of course, there is a generalization of the Abel Yakov value. And um, uh, instead of uh, stating the precise definition, uh, when x, equal x is projective, I want to x. OK. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? 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 Uh, do, do you have any question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just was able to get into the Zoom. And oh, just, I see. I see. Uh, it's just a nightmare. Ah, ah, hi, Professor. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Okay, so we are starting. Uh, have, we have already started this uh, uh, talk. Um, could, could, could you see my screen? So could could I continue the seminar? Is it fine? Okay, so uh, if there is no problem, I would like to continue. All right, everyone. Okay, so uh, so as I said. Uh, we can generalize the notion of the child cycles and the intermediate Jacobian for the higher case, and we can define the uh, higher version of the Abel Jacobian map Asia PN. Okay. And when we consider projective variety X, then actually this uh, higher Abel Jacobian map is uh, uh, coincide with the usual Dorinus cycle class to the Dorinus cohomology CDPN. Okay. And we also can compute uh, AJPNX uh, for the cycle Z by using the regulator current RZ and uh, uh, Matka, James Lewis, and Mirror Stacks formula, K, which is called the K formula. Okay. So this is a kind of, um, again, the generalization of the membrane integral AJPNZ. Uh, valued over W is uh, uh, omega is given by the integral of the omega for appropriate geometric uh, uh, part of the information of the higher cycle. But also we need as the information uh, of the regulator current integral part. Okay. All right. So again, here, uh, please, please recall that we have generalized uh, uh, child, child cycle to higher child cycle and uh, intermediate Jacobian to higher intermediate Jacobian uh, and also higher Abel Jacobian maps. And then we can consider the family of the higher cycles. Okay? Then we obtain the higher Abel Jacobian map values function over the parameter space S. This is a definition of the geometric higher normal function. Okay. I want to denote as it as a new Z, which is an element of the uh, section over S of the uh, higher intermediate Jacobian bundle of JPN. Okay. So the, uh, the reason why I have put the word geometric here is 
actually, uh, we have a more general notion of the admissible normal function, but especially this higher normal function is coming from the, the uh, kind of higher algebraic cycles. So when, consider, when we consider these higher algebraic cycles, geometrically, we obtain an uh, example of the admissible normal function. So very formally, uh, the definition of the admissible normal function is given by the Morihiko Saito by using the theory of the mixed logic module. And we, uh, it, it can be considered as an element of the following uh, a little bit complicated groups. Extension class of the mixed logic module over S, uh, such that uh, it is polarized and smooth relative to the closure S bar and the extension class of the R to Pn minus N minus one pi lower star QP. Uh, so here is tensor OS and uh, by Q, okay? And uh, for the simplest, I want to write it by using an admissible normal function S, okay? So, for this higher normal function, uh, 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 as my explanation, you should imagine uh, just a function defined by the param parameterized higher Abel Yakov maps. But by, uh, for these uh, parameterized uh, higher Abel Yakov values, uh, we formally can detect uh, uh, their non triviality by using two types of invariance. Okay? These two types of invariance of the higher normal functions are called singularity or limit of the higher normal functions. So the formal definition is given by using the uh, explanation of the admission normal function. It is given by extension class of the categories and uh, by considering uh, its uh, ki kind of specialization, right? Uh, we prove accent to all of the S bar and restrict to the special value. Then we obtain the specialization to extension class over the derived category of the mixed structure. And by using the uh, home, home X um, uh, spectral sequence, we obtain the short, short result sequence with, with respect to X1 and home. Okay. Then uh, by connecting these two morphemes, we obtain the sing definition of the singularity of the admissible normal function. And when we consider its kernel, then naturally we obtain the induced morphism and it defines the limit uh, of the normal function. <coughs> Sorry. So this is just exactly the formal definition of these two singularities, but rather than this, these formal uh, definitions, I would like to introduce more into the geometric uh, explanation of these two invariants. So geometric meaning of the uh, singularity and limits. Okay. When we consider a family of higher char cycles uh, parameterized by T, which is the T, then we can consider its uh, limiting behavior uh, when we move T to the singular fiber T0. Okay. Then we obtain a certain limiting higher I, I do not want to say cycles, but uh, limiting things ZT0, it is a, a element of the pre-cycle, okay? But uh, sometimes uh, it may not be a higher cycle, okay? If we take the boundary, then it not, uh, the boundary will not be crossed, okay? I would like to show the typical example. When we consider uh, a family X over S, and assume, let's assume that it has a singularity at uh, a certain point P in the singular fiber X T0. This is the singularity of the total of the family, not only the singular fiber, okay? Then to obtain the uh, theory of the admissible normal function, we need a smooth X. So for this, we need to blow up X around this singular point P, okay? And um, in, in this setting, if we have a, a, a higher cycle ZT, which is defined by two components, with a boundary information zero and infinity at the intersection point. And if uh, occasionally uh, one of these boundary intersecting point is a bad singularity P, then the blow up will affect this P only at X T zero. As a result, if we consider this uh, higher child cycle and its limiting behavior, ZT0 has the following form. We have the zero and infinity, zero and infinity with two components. 
but these above zero and infinity are totally detached and we need to connect them by using the exceptional divisor. Okay. So this ex exceptional divisor EP uh, explains the singularity of the USD. Okay. In other words, we can say that singularity invariant is a kind of obstruction to get a uh, uh, higher cycle on x t0. So this is a mean of the singularity. And please recall that when we consider another invariant limit, limit is defined over the kernel of the singularity. What is the kernel of the singularity invariant? If we believe this explanation of the singularity, which is an uh, obstruction, then kernel of the singularity means that there is no obstruction to obtain the, obtain the higher cycle even in the uh, limiting singular fiber, okay? So it means that if singular singularity of the higher normal function is uh, trivial, then one can extend uh, this uh, family of the higher cycles even to a higher cycle on the singular fiber ZT. And we obtain, if we obtain the higher cycle even in, on the ZT, ZT0, then we can consider its other variable value. It expresses a limiting value of the uh, higher other variable map. Okay? So it defines a limit invariance. Okay? And actually, um, uh, uh, um, Professor Griffiths and Green and Khan, uh, more generally, uh, Professor Doran and other um, <coughs> also shows that uh, we can compute this limit invariant of the admissible normal function by using just a, a directly arbitrary value of this ZT, ZT0 over the XT0. So we need to consider this limit invariant not on the, uh, the original intermediate Jacobian of the XT0, but the uh, limit, limiting uh, intermediate Jacobian. Okay, so we need to map this AJXT0 ZTO value by using the uh, specialization map uh, between the intermediate Jacobians. But anyway, what I wanted to, to explain is that limit of the higher normal function means that limit of the higher other uh, Jacobian values arising from a certain higher child cycles, okay? So as a conclusion, I want to say that the that main theorem says that upper constants in the B-model side essentially arise from a certain family of higher cycles and concerns the other Jacobian value and its limit. Of course, a question to understand the theorem is that how to construct such a kind of family of higher cycles. So does, does anyone uh, have any question about this topic? Okay. All right. So to construct a uh, good higher child cycles, we need to divide the five nuclei three for two, two cases. Uh, case one uh, includes V12, V16, V18, and case two includes V10 and V14. Why I have divided them to two cases is just for the case one, we need to tweet zeta three or LK3, this, this uh, part uh, contains uh, pi, pi cube. So all of these values are inside of the with the tape tree three. On the other hand, case two tweets are zeta two. So here, <coughs> the field we should consider is a Q twisting by two. Okay. So, because of the difference of the three and two, we need to divide them to two cases. Okay. How actually we could get these values Q3 or Q2 as a result of the uh, other Jacobian values? Okay. The, the, uh, uh, one clue is considering uh, the, the limit of the higher child cycles uh, towards a motivic cohomology. Okay. For example, when we consider the higher child cycle CH3 by T3, then uh, its degenerating result uh, on the singular fiber YT0 is given by the um, uh, <coughs> higher child cohomology CH3 by 0 3 or it is just given by the 
cohomology of uh, H3Y0, Q2, Sting3. Okay. And to compute this higher child cohomology, we need to consider the cohomology of the total complex of the double complex given by the uh, the uh, each strata of the single normal mapping by the single fiber and the blocks uh, double complex. Okay. So here, uh, I I automatically assume that y zero is a single normal crossing divisor, and y zero i implies that it is a codimension i strata. Okay. So the original cycle will appear, uh, when we consider the limit of the CH3YT3, the original cycle will appear at this part, this 3 y 0 3 But when we consider the motivic cohomology on the singular fiber, then we can shift its representation, representative, uh, instead of using the element in original Z3-3 term, but diagonally move to this one, Z3, Y0 codimension two strata five. Codimension two strata of this uh, two dimensional uh, thing is just a point. Okay, So on this point, we obtain the Abelian code value. Then naturally, we obtain the field to obtain the Q3. Okay. So the idea is if we can find a good higher, uh, so higher child cycle, family of the high chance cycle, which degenerate to a certain pre-cycle, which is essentially equal to the point in the motivic cohomology class, then as a variable map, we obtain certain value in Q3. If we do the same thing for the case two, then uh, to obtain the Q2 as a result of the variable map, uh, instead of CH3 YT3, we should start from CH2 YT, YT1. This is a reason why I need to uh, find a different kind of higher time cycles for these two cases. Hmm. And actually, uh, as a, uh, another very good uh, interesting point is that uh, in the theorem, we have constructed these cycles in CH3Y3 for the case one or CH2Y1 for the case two uh, by using toric geometry. <coughs> So uh, here, maybe uh, a mysterious connection with the mirror symmetry. Right. So uh, fortunately, uh, for each of the Mukai three for V dot, we have the, uh, when we consider the LG model, then we have a direct descri description and it is given on the database uh, HTTP blah, blah, I want to show. So especially this is a, uh, website fun variety as external row and polynomials, and uh, when we click fun variety, we obtain such a kind of uh, look at three fours, p t four six, and so on. And by checking the pure sequence in uh, this website, uh, we can find, for example, Picard, what is a Picard Fuchs operator, what is degree, and what is a uh, typical polytopes, and, and so on. So we know a lot about the mucus sample, and this is a reason why uh, we have uh, restricted our intention to uh, mucus samples. Okay. All right. So especially for uh, and, and uh, by using these toric data, uh, the random Ginzburg model is very specific, very specifically given by the closure of the Roland polynomial one minus t by equal zero inside of the toric uh, variety uh, with respect to the given. Um, <coughs> given Newton point of P delta. And also, uh, we have a good choice of the phi, which is a Minkowski polynomial. It is a kind of class of the uh, easy uh, polynomial with respect to delta. Okay. For example, in my case, V14, we can get the LG model by considering one minus T pi equals zero with a phi, which is defined by X plus Y plus T plus one square over X plus x plus y plus c plus one times one plus c plus one times d plus one square over x, y, z. Okay, so if we put this, uh, uh, the corresponding Newton point of to this Roland polynomial, uh, the Newton point of has this kind of form. All right. So like this, for the Mukai three force, we obtain uh, uh, explanation by using the toric variety. Okay. And on, 
and what is a toric variety? Toric variety is a, a variety which contains a, a kind of torus, right? So uh, for the case one, we just need to use the information of this internal torus. On the, tor on tor uh, the product of torus, GM23, inside of the, uh, our family, okay, we have a natural higher cycle, which is given, uh, which is just represented by the toric rule of the x, y, z for the torus coordinate. Okay? This gives the element of the, in the CH3, GM233. Okay? Precisely, it is just a graph of x, y, z in GM3 times P1 uh, over 1, 2, 3, and 0 and infinity does not intersect with x, y, z, so boundary uh, has nothing. So naturally, we obtain an element of the higher chart cycle. And sometimes we can extend this natural higher cycle uh, in, on the torus to all of our family, and it defines the element of the CHC Y3. Okay. The condition to get such an extension of this natural torus cycle is called the temperedness. Okay. Uh, so here, uh, I want to introduce a weaker version of the temperedness. Uh, the Rora, given Rora polynomial phi is called weakly tempered. If for each codimension I facet sigma, the toric coordinate symbol given by uh, locally given uh, on this facet x1 sigma to xn minus 1 sigma, then if we define the trivial class uh, as, as this way uh, in the higher chart cycle chn minus 1 d sigma star n minus 1, then it is called the weak rate temper. The interesting point is that uh, when we consider the case that n minus i here is just one, then we obtain only one symbol here. And the temperedness means that this is, after tensor q, it is trivial. So it means that the uh, toric coordinate, uh, toric coordinate x1 sigma for the base locus is root of unity. So here we obtain a kind of transcendental condition for uh, the choice of the Rora polynomial and it gives a temperedness. And uh, Silver Jr. shows that when we consider Minkowski polynomial on the three dimensional situation, then at least they, they are weakly tempered. Okay. And this tempered condition is very uh, good to extend uh, the uh, natural to, to, natural Talk cycles arising from the torus. So Duran and Carl theorem says that if phi is tempered, and also we need to be careful about the uh, kind of small singularity conditions, but uh, for Mukai's uh, threefold case, we do not uh, need to care about it. Then for this family, uh, this star inside of the torus leads to the family uh, of the higher cycle over all of our family. Our Randall Ginsburg model. Okay. So, by using this cycle, we obtain a higher normal function by considering the Abbey Raffel map. And this is a desired higher normal function. And we also need a normalization process a little bit, and I will, I will explain later. And after this normalization, finally, we obtain the exactly Abbey constant as a limit, uh, which coincides with Gorshev's result. So this is a con uh, construction for the case one. And the construction for the case two is a little bit uh, different, but again, we need to use a natural uh, toric information of the random Ginsburg model. Okay. So we can construct uh, the desired higher cycle Z in, in this case, CH211, 2Y1, as a combination of components of the base workers. So I would like to explain the construction in my case, V14. Okay? Because that uh, when we consider the Newton polytope corresponding to the Randall Ginzel model for V14, it has this form. And please focus on this backside facet sigma. Okay? Since it is given by the, co the coordinate x equals zero, uh, locally this back facet sigma is given by uh, the condition x equals zero. Then I want to show again what is phi. If we obtain original phi and x equals zero, and uh, since we want to consider the base locus, uh, we ignore the uh, denominator. Then for the numerator, we obtain y plus d plus one square here. 
and here y plus z plus one, and again y plus z plus one. So we can summarize them to just one term. Okay. So as a result, when phi equals zero, we obtain y plus z plus one square times one z y z plus z plus one square equals zero. Uh, it is given by two components. Okay. So uh, for the uh, simplicity of the computation, we need to change the coordinate by uh, x one x over z to x tilde, y over z to y tilde, and y over z to z tilde. Then we obtain the the similar equation, uh, which expresses y tilde plus y plus uh, one plus z tilde square and y tilde plus one plus z tilde square for one side. Okay. The first component is the uh, line L with a multiplicity two, and the second one is a. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, it's not conic, but uh, quadratic. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's see, and the key point is that both of them are isomorphic to just a P1. And via this isomorphic P1, we obtain a graph of this isomorphic isomorphism, and it gives the information of the higher chance cycles because P1 has a zero and infinity. So uh, how we should put zero and infinity on this line or uh, this quadratics, uh, we obtain the higher charge cycle. <laughs> so for, for the fi figure on the facet sigma, we obtain certain quadratic C and line L, and we just connect them by zero and infinity by considering the rational function P over Q or Q over P. Then it defines a higher cycle. Okay, so by using this higher cycle, we actually obtain the higher normal function, mu z t, and we consider the uh, family of its value uh, with a test for omega, omega t. Here, omega t should be given by the holomorphic form, so we should use a residue, okay? One over two pi n minus one, residue of the d of x over one minus t t is a, a good test form because it, it gives a holomorphic period. And essentially, this VT is our desired upper constant if we take the limit. But again, like dividing B, uh, the sequence Bn by one over six, like this, we need to normalize this VT in some sense. So here, for the normalization meaning, uh, we should consider the inhomogeneous picard fuchs equation. If we apply <coughs> picard fuchs operator to V, then we obtain a certain polynomial Z. So we normalize this original normal function, higher normal function, uh, mu z t to mu z tilde t uh, by uh, changing this term uh, inside of z with respect to t to the, uh, sorry, the, the term for t in this polynomial t g, polynomial g has a quotient just negative one. So the specific computation for my case V14 uh, is as follows. Uh, finally, our aim is obtain the Gauss shift uh, with that upper constant, uh, in this case, zeta two over seven. How we could get this zeta two and how we could get one over seven is as follows. <coughs> so by using the KLM formula, uh, the higher normal function, uh, this one, Vt, in this case is given by two pi i square integral over a certain membrane, uh, gamma t, omega t. Here, this membrane is just a membrane whose boundary is just a geometric cycle appear in the definition of the higher child cycles, okay? So uh, it is given like this, okay? So this membrane is not on the plane, but the surface uh, over the xt, okay? So you should imagine that we have the fixed base locus boundary, but when we consider the uh, membrane, then this membrane is on in, in each of the fiber y two, so it will be smoothly moving. So we want to consider this integral. However, if we consider a very small t, then we can compute this integral by using the residue formula, because uh, this gamma t uh, will surround around, around the uh, singular fiber x equals zero. And at x equals zero, we can change the, uh, we can put out the residue, okay? 
<coughs> so the integral is given over uh, this plane area, capital A, times just a, a cylinder S1, A times S1, and D of X over one minus T plus. This is a, a explanation of the high, higher normal function we do. Okay? And we want to expand this higher normal function expression by respect to T to K. Then, since this integral is uh, totally independent from the uh, third, uh, third <laughs> variable x, uh, we just need to consider the constant term in phi with respect to x tilde uh, times 2k. Okay? Uh, and d log x hat means that dy tilde over y tilde, which t, c tilde, which c tilde. So we need to consider, uh, we need to compute, compute finally such a kind of log integrals. Okay. okay, so when we consider the coefficient for k equals zero, since this is an expansion, we obtain actually the limit of the, uh, this normal higher normal function toward t equals zero. Okay. It is given by just the integral of the d1, dy over y, which dz over z along a certain area appearing here, this one. Okay. And by the computation, we obtain uh, minus zeta two. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, reason we, why we obtain zeta two. Okay. And two cases of one over seven, we need to, uh, to normalize a higher normal function with respect to the quotient for k equal one. Okay. It means that first order approximation uh, part of the normal function with respect to t. So the integral is given as follows, and uh, this is the result just I have the uh, last weekend, so <laughs> uh, I, I haven't informed this fact even for uh, Professor Matka, but um, maybe immediately I will talk uh, with him and discuss more about this result. But the, uh, the, the miracle is that actually we obtain seven here. Okay. And the constant seven minus four zeta two. So by using this seven, we can normalize uh, to change this term to negative one because this explains that Picard Fuchs uh, operator applying to VT, the result is given by, uh, I believe that it is just seven T, but uh, it might have some other con uh, terms. But anyway, uh, it will start from seven T. And please recall that the way to normalize the uh, higher normal function to get the Golshev's result is uh, normalize, uh, divide uh, the normal function such that this term goes to negative one. So we should take the multiplication of negative one over seven here. So finally, we obtain the limit uh, of the uh, good higher normal function which is a t, and it gives the Golshev's upper constant theta to the two over seven. So as a conclusion, we obtain a good higher normal function. And where is our AT and BT? As I said, AT is originally coming from the holomorphic field because the picard fuchs operator applied to AT equals zero. Okay? Then by using AT, we also can immediately recover what is BT. BT is just the uh, difference of the AT applied to the limit V0 tilde and uh, minus V tilde T. Okay? Then if we shift this term and divide them, we obtain BT over AT goes to V tilde zero. Okay? And also if we apply the Picard-Fuchs equation for this BT, then because of the normalization process, we obtain exact BT. Uh, this is the reason why this normalization is a natural. In homogeneous uh, Picard-Fuchs equation tends to be just a, um, the, the easiest uh, polynomial T. So uh, I'd like to finish uh, my talk. And uh, this explains that uh, <coughs> on the B model side, uh, the arithmetic uh, special value of uh, the L function is essentially coming from uh, good higher child cycles. And the, maybe the important point is that uh, totally this construction of the higher child cycle is arising from the data of the toric geometry for the case one. Uh, it is given just by, uh, from the interior torus. And for the case two, it is given by the certain kind of combination of the base workers. So again, uh, perhaps it's interesting question, what, uh, what, what is their meaning of the information or what is the 
uh, mirror side information and compare with Goethe's technique by using the quantum recursion, maybe uh, we could uh, understand uh, deeper result about these uh, motivic numbers uh, are based constant. So thank you very much. I have uh, finished today's talk here. Okay, let's uh, all thank Tokyo for the talk. I know I'm doing some clapping here, I don't know. Um, I have a question actually, um, which is, uh, I, I think that, I mean, the, this discussion of where your, your cycle classes came from, I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess it, it was possible for me to follow the like particular places, like, oh, the one comes from the Taurus and the other one, but it seems a bit like, uh, mm -hmm. I still don't know kind of why you chose those particular cycle classes. So yeah. maybe I can ask, mm -hmm. like, in the higher dimension, like if I imagine trying to do some version of this construction in higher dimensions, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. will I use similar constructions to get my cycle mm -hmm. classes? Like I'll, I'll take a higher dimensional torus or? Mm -hmm. I, see, I see. For the case one, I think uh, it's natural to consider such a kind of uh, construction of the higher cycle because it's uh, essentially coming from the torus. Right? And for case two, it might be more mysterious because uh, I know that uh, by using the combination of the base locus, we obtain uh, interesting higher cycle uh, with uh, my uh, other past project. I mean, to show the uh, Hodgety conjecture for some cases, we need to do, uh, we needed to do such a kind of construction by using the, uh, connect the combination of the base workers, then naturally we obtain always uh, element inside of the CH21 YT1. Okay. And uh, as this uh, figure, uh, when we consider its limit, then by using this kind of um, elevator figure, uh, we can shift the information of original higher child cycle to a certain uh, arithmetic uh, cycle on just a point. So on just a point, uh, if uh, we obtain the uh, non-trivial element, it should corresponding to, in this case, theta two. So I think, uh, um, uh, I, yeah, uh, I, I just could answer partially, but uh, one reason why we have used such a construction of the higher child cycle is that we can define it totally just by using the base locus of the, uh, Okay, thanks. Um, are there other questions for Tokyo? Uh, if not, uh, maybe we should thank our speaker again. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, we're giving the clapping emojis. To, yeah, oh, there it goes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This function is very, very useful. I, I could see the yeah, crop <laughs> on hand on the Zoom, Zoom uh, screen. Okay. Uh, thank you everyone to yeah uh, uh, attend this uh, IMSA seminar.